Thanks everyone for joining. Um, I'm gonna be walking through a full demo of Playbook UX. I'll go through all the different methodologies that you can conduct um, and all the different types of research you can conduct. So I'll start out with some unmoderated testing and then we'll get into moderated, card sorting, tree testing, and surveys with your own participants, with Playbook UX participants. Um, great, so to start, this is your Playbook UX dashboard. So I always like to give a quick overview First is your workspaces. So you can see I have multiple different workspaces, um, but that's a great way to kind of organize and synthesize your research. You can see in my workspace here, I have a bunch of different projects, and then I can group those projects into folders and folder groups. So nice way to kind of keep your research organized. When you're ready to get started, you're just gonna click the blue button, create project here. And once I click that button, I'll have a few different methodologies to choose from, right? Unmoderated, moderated, card sorting and tree testing and surveys. So we're gonna start with unmoderated here. Select unmoderated. And I'm gonna name my project. So I'm gonna call this Thursday UX test here. And then I'm gonna choose who do I wanna get feedback from? So is it the Playbook UX panel of participants or is it my own participants? For this example, I'll just show what it's gonna look like with the Playbook UX panel of participants. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and click next. And then this is where I'm going to set up my audience. So I have segment one here. So we can set up multiple segments with Playbook UX. This is really great for targeting different groups and then also analyzing your research. So maybe I want to see how parents versus college students um, feel about our design, I can definitely do that. So in this example, I'm going to set up parents here and I'm gonna say I wanna recruit, let's just say five participants. And then I choose the device that I want the tester to take the study on. So if it's a computer, tablet, smartphone, you can also save your audiences. So you don't have to keep adding this each time. You can save it and pull it in, which is really nice. Um, I can filter on age, all these different um, filtering here capabilities job role, industry, work status, all of that stuff, company size. Um, but I can also ask qualifying questions. So I may want to ask something simple. I might want to ask, you know, are you a parent? Um, and then we're going to say yes, qualify, no, disqualify. Um, of course, you can ask more complex questions as well. Um, but yeah, and then I'm going to set up my second audience. So I set up the parents. Now I'm going to set up the college students. So I'm going to say college students here. And again, I want five participants here. They can be on a computer. That's great. Um, and I can kind of do all my different filtering options that I want, right? Um, I actually want students. So we're going to say we want people who are students. And then we're going to ask qualifying questions again, right? So I can ask something, again, simple. Um, are you a college student? Yes, no. And so um, for these purposes, I'll just get this launched. But that's the setting up the audience, pretty simple, um, pretty intuitive there. And then I'm gonna go ahead um, and set up my questions. So again, we're doing an unmoderated study. Um, at Playbook UX, we have tons of awesome templates and popular questions you can start from. So if you want, um, kind of look at some of our kind of common templates. You can also save templates to your workspace as well, which is a nice feature. Or if you don't wanna take in the whole template, you might want to just browse popular questions. We have tons of popular questions you can kind of pull in and, and add as well. So lots of stuff there to kind of help you get started. Um, you can also start with some context. So I always let people know this is before the recording starts. So I might want to say something like, you will be walking through a prototype today, right? I put my URL here. It could be anything, um, any public facing link. Um, let's just say, we're going to say, um, we're testing the Playbook UX landing page, let's just say, playbookux.com, right? And so I, I pulled in a task here, um, but I can e keep adding my tasks and my questions, right? So I might want to ask something like, um, spend two minutes on the homepage, right? And then I'll ask another question, um, rating scale. So I might want to say on a scale of one, two, ten, run one through 10, how easy is this to find? Very difficult, very easy. Pretty simple there. And then I might wanna do a written response. So I can say something like, what do you like best about this product? Um, and then next I wanna do a multi-select. So again, um, you know, which um, food do you like best? Pizza, breadsticks, all of that, single select. So pretty flexible there, as many questions, all of that. 
Um, and then you just preview your setting, make sure all looks good. And when you're ready, you're gonna go ahead and click next. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I have some edits I need to make, but make sure all looks good with my um, questions and then I'm just ready to submit. So this will go out to testers once you submit the setting. Um, they're gonna start taking it. Uh, you'll get an email once you once the project starts to be getting collecting responses, which is typically pretty quick. Um, and then after the setting, you can also analyze all the, um, the analytics. So parents versus college students right here. Here, you can see this is a done project. So I have my project details here. I have my audience. I can always add more participants, save my audience if I want to. Um, I have two audience segments here. Um, I can also see the questions here that I asked um, during the session, which is great. And then I can drill into the participants. So I can go participant by participant. Um, and the nice thing is we did segment our audiences so we can see, all right, how do college students react versus how do parents feel, right? And so I can kind of analyze that. Um, I can see all the demographics, the employment, how they answered the screener. And then I can go ahead and watch the video as well. When you're watching the video, you're gonna do quite a bit of analysis. So I'll put this on mute here. So they are recording their screen, sharing their voice, all that fun stuff. Um, you can see we do pull a transcript automatically as well. So it's broken down by question, right? This is the question, this is the transcript here. Um, and as you're going along, you might see something super interesting. So you might wanna go ahead and highlight it. We have tons of different kind of taggings and things you can set up. This is really great for finding themes and patterns in your research, which is nice. So I set up these tags, but you can set them up however you like. Maybe I wanna set up creating an account. Um, we also have this preset reaction. So these are things that are already kind of created by our system, positive, negative, bug, confuse, some things like that. Um, as I'm going along, I also might wanna take some notes and create some clips. So. Um, I want to say something, you know, this is interesting and I can also tag that. So I might want to tag that as an important moment, right? Um, and then if I find a moment too, I want to grab and create a clip. So I can go create a clip, you know, this is my clip and save that clip there. So I can tag my clips. Uh, let's say it's a confused moment. Um, and as you kind of create more and more clips, you can pull those together and create a highlight reel, which I'll show you how to do in just a minute. So that's the video player here. Uh, you have tons of different controls that you can use. And the next thing we're gonna look at is actually um, the analytics. So you can see similar with segmentation, we can actually see the analytics broken down by the different um, segments that you created. So you can see some positive, negative, neutral things. I can filter by question. I can also see demographic or the charts, right? Rating scale, uh, time on question, how long did each participant spend on each question? multi-select chart, right? Single select, written response chart there as well. Uh, so super helpful. Demographic charting and graphing. Again, if I wanted to see, okay, let's just see the college students and we wanna see their answers, that's gonna look a little different. So really nice ways you can kind of analyze and pull your research together there. Next, we're gonna dive into the quotes. So our system pulls out key quotes from the session um, automatically for you. So category was set a lot across all the participants. Um, we're going to show you when that was said, who said it, when they said it, all that fun stuff. So super helpful there to kind of get a high level view um, of things. Next, you can create your own summary output report from the session. So I might want to say something like, you know, this is what happened during the session, right? I have all of my formatting options here and I can also add in research. So if I find I have a clip here that I wanna pull in or a highlight reel that I wanna pull in, something I tagged, I wanna pull that in, um, or a note that I made. So it's super comprehensive, makes it really easy to create a quick summary report of your sessions and pull those all in together. And then of course I can share as a link, tons of functionality there. Um, next I'm gonna show you is highlight reel. Earlier I showed you how to create clips of your sessions. Now I'm gonna show you how to pull all those together and create a highlight reel. So I'm gonna use this nice little button here, create highlight reel. Um, you can see these are my previous reels. And so you can see all of my clips across all my different projects show up on this left-hand side. And it's nice because anything I tag shows up here as well. So I can pull in, okay, this is an interesting clip. I'm gonna pull this clip in and I'm going to pull in this other clip. And they're gonna to stitch together and you can create a nice little summary highlight reel from the session. So 
super helpful, super interesting there. Next is tags. So here we can analyze those tags that we created earlier on. So I can analyze across all of my different projects in my workspace, what was tagged, who tagged it, when they tagged it. So I can see all of my projects here and I can drill down into specific projects. I can see trustworthy was tagged a bunch, right? And so we can see, I could filter on a certain date. What did we do this month versus last month? Um, and I can analyze. Um, I can also drill into specific tags as well. So just checking out the checkout process or um, let's see, uh, navigation challenges. So I can just see those. So tons of uh, analysis that you can do to kind of figure out exactly themes and patterns and how you're kind of trending with your research there as well. Um, and of course you can manage your tags, a lot of functionality there. And then lastly, I'll just show you an unmoderated um, is universal search. So you can search everything in your workspace, anything that's in a transcript, a note, a clip, a report, a tag. Um, this is probably the most underrated feature. You can find whatever you're looking for whenever you need it. So super helpful um, to kind of easily find what you need when you need it. So the next methodology we're gonna go over is moderated interviews. So similar to unmoderated interviews, um, we're gonna select create project here. And we're just going to select moderated here. So I'm going to select moderated. And then I'm going to name my project. So I'm going to just call this one Thursday moderated interview. And then I'm just going to decide how long do I want the session to be? 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes, 120 minutes. Um, and then I'm going to choose again, do I want to get feedback from the Playbook UX panel or my own participants? So I'm gonna click next here. So similar to unmoderated, I'm gonna set up my audience segments. So I can have as many segments as I'd like. Um, so I'm gonna name this one called parents, right? And I'm gonna decide how many participants do I want? What device should I use? And I can use a saved audience if I'd like. I can use any other kind of filter options that I'd like here. Um, I can also use qualifying questions. So I might want to ask a question like, um, are you a parent? Yes, no. Um, again, you can kind of add that second audience if you'd like, or you can just launch with one audience. That also works. Segmentation is really great for analyzing your research as well. So we'll get into that in a bit. But when I'm ready, I'm going to go ahead and click next. So what I'm going to do is make sure all of my um, details look good here. And then I'm gonna submit. Once I submit my study, I'm gonna be prompted to set up my calendar. So when I set up my calendar, that's how participants are gonna be able to book time. Um, great, so I'm gonna check out a project that I can show you how to set up the calendar. So here you can see a moderated project that's been launched. I have my project details, the, you know, the audiences here. I can also invite collaborators. So this is really helpful if you have multiple team members that want to join the sessions, um, I can invite them. And um, next step, I'm gonna set up my schedule. So you can see here, I already have a few participants um, that have actually completed their interviews. Um, but once, once people have booked, you'll show up here. Um, you will get a link to join the meeting. That will also be in the calendar invite. So both sides, you and the participant, will get a calendar invite. And then I can set up my calendar, right? So I can have buffer time. So maybe I don't wanna have back-to-back -back interviews. Um, I might want to have advanced notice, so I don't want people booking in the next three hours, let's just say. Um, and also max bookings per day, right? I don't want more than four interviews in one day. Um, I always let people know, make sure your time zone is correct here. Um, and then I'm going to select, yes, I'm available on Friday um, during these blocks of time. And then I just submit my calendar and then participants will start booking. Um, and then all you need to do as the researcher is just join the session it's gonna automatically record, transcribe, and store for you. So all the work is done for you. Um, and then I'm gonna drill into the participants. So this is what you'll see after the session. You can see Ashley here. Um, I can check out demographics, employment, screener. Um, and then I can also go ahead and watch Ashley's video. Great, so here you can see uh, the researchers joined. We have a transcript here on the right-hand side, uh, broken down by speaker, speaker one, speaker two. Um, and so as I'm going along, I might find something super interesting and I can go ahead and tag that. So you can see I have a bunch of different tags here. 
um, that I've created, but you can set up your tags however you'd like. So maybe I want to create a navigation issue, something like that. Um, I can also use those preset reactions, so things like positive, negative, bug, confused. Um, and we'll be able to filter on those underneath the tags tab here. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead, so let's say as I'm in the session, um, I want to take notes. This is my note here. Um, you can also take live notes during the session. So as you're in the um, session with the participant, they wouldn't be able to see the notes, but you and the participant, um, you and your other researcher would be able to see the live notes. Um, so I might want to tag my notes here. Again, navigation, product description page here. And of course I have this on mute, so they are talking, but I put it on mute so I can talk over. Um, similar to unmoderated, I can also create clips of the session. So if I find something interesting and I want to grab a clip of that, I can say this is my clip here and I'm going to save that clip. And I can also tag that clip. So let's just say that was a bug for some reason. Um, so that's kind of high level on moderated on the video player. Um, you can also see there are analytics. You can also create reports. Those are similar to unmoderated. So you can see I've created a clip here. Um, I can add in clips, highlight reels, tags, all those things I could pull into my report um, as well. Similar to unmoderated, I can also create highlight reels. So I showed you how to create clips. I can then pull those clips together and make a highlight reel. So I would just click create highlight reel here and all of my clips show up on this left-hand side, right? So I wanna say, okay, I'm gonna pull these clips in and then they're going to kind of generate for me automatically, which is super helpful. Next is tags. So let's just say um, I've tagged a bunch of different things, as you can see I have. Um, you can filter down into specific projects. So if I wanna just see, okay, what was tagged in this project or that project. Tags is super helpful for kind of finding themes and patterns in your research across time, across projects. So. Interesting, navigation was tagged a lot. I can see all the times it was tagged, who tagged it, when they tagged it, why they tagged it, all of that. And I can also drill into um, date ranges. So if I wanna compare last month, what do we tag, versus this month, what do we tag? Um, or I want to tag um, checkout process. Let's see um, what the checkout process flow is there. Or um, I'm just gonna look at all the, let's say, only the positive full reactions, right? So I can kind of get, I can really get specific there in terms of my targeting and my tagging there. And again, similar to unmoderated and all the other methodologies, you can see universal search. So again, you can see any transcripts that you've, um, you can search those, you can search highlight reels, clips, anything like that. Um, you can go ahead and search. So that is all of moderated. So the next method I'm gonna go over is card sorting. So similar to the other methods, I'm gonna create a project by clicking on the blue button here. And this time I'm gonna select card sort. So I just select card sort here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna name my card sort. So we're gonna call this Thursday card sort, right? And I can describe it if I'd like. I also choose who do I wanna get feedback from, whether the Playbook UX panel or my own. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click next. So similar to other methods, I can set up a audience segments. So you can have as many segments as you like. This is very, very helpful for the analysis, but you can also say, I wanna get five Gen Z and I wanna get five millennials. So you can segment and make sure you're getting the right quotas of the different um, target demographics that you have. So here I might wanna say, I'm looking to target parents and I can select how many participants do I wanna get feedback from. So let's say I wanna get um, 15 parents. And so I can use a saved audience if I'd like. So most time you might wanna keep adding that audience each time. So I can save that audience, add that in there, um, or also filter on the demographics, right? So if I do wanna get specific, I can also use qualifying questions. So if I wanna say something like, um, are you a parent? Yes, no, right? and no is disqualified. So I can get more and more specific as I'd like. And then the next thing, I just add my second audience if I'd like to. So I'm gonna go ahead and click next. And here what I'm gonna do is set up my cards. I have three options, open, close, and hybrid. An open card sort is when the participant is going to be able to sort the cards into whatever categories they feel best serve them. 
Closed card sort is you as the researcher are going to set up those categories and the participant would sort the cards into the categories that you've set up. And then a hybrid card sort is a mix of both. So you may set up some cards and then the participants may sort those cards into those categories or make their own if they feel that makes sense for them. Next, I'm going to set up my card names. So I'm going to do something simple, right? I'll do iPhone and we're going to do Android and then we might do MacBook and then let's say Dell computer. And I can add tooltip descriptions if I want. So if I want to give a little more context, I could do that. I can also upload images. So let's say I want to show a picture of an iPhone, which um, wouldn't make sense for this use case, but other use cases it would. Um, or I can also have just the image and no name. So that's where I would do this setting here, hide the card names. Um, or I can also randomize cards. I can randomize the categories, all of best practices there. Um, and then I can also create some categories. So let's say Apple is one category and then um, let's say Google, right? And I kind of keep adding them there. So pretty simple. Again, I'm doing a hybrid card sort here. So what I'll do right now is I'm gonna preview that study and I'm gonna show you what that looks like um, from the participant point of view. So it's pretty simple. We have some instructions here. You can customize those instructions, which you can do in the next step. So when I'm ready, I'm gonna click proceed to study. Again, you have some instructions and then you have your cards that can be sorted in. So iPhone is gonna to go to Apple, right? Android to Google and I'm kind of keep adding those. Um, they can see the instructions, but pretty simple from a participant point of view and they just sort what they make sense. And if they wanna add a new category, they can do that as well. So after I feel good about my um, cards and categories, I'm going to go ahead and click next. And here are the instructions. So if I wanted to, I can customize those. I don't need to. We have some built-in instructions for you. Make Everything makes good. We're gonna say yes, we're gonna click next. And then I'm gonna look at my summary, right? So I make sure everything here looks good. And then when I'm good, I'm gonna submit and pay. And then that's gonna go right out to the testers. They'll start taking the study. They get paid for their time. When you get an email first back with your participant um, responses. So you can see this is a done card sort. I have my project details, my audience, right? I have segment one, and then I drill into the participants. So I can, so I can see here's all my participants here. I can see their demographics, their employment, how they answer the screener question. And then I can also see their answers, right? What cards they sorted into what categories. So food and groceries, they sorted snacks, meat and seafood, right? And you can kind of go along and follow that. Um, of course, it's interesting to see the individual participants' responses, but what you're really going to want to see is the aggregate. So here's where you can see all the participants' responses, right? So I have all my cards, all my categories. So I have hair care, right, is the card, and it was sorted into the category health and beauty, um, and then it was also sorted into the category personal care as well, and foot care. So I can go and analyze all my different cards and all my different categories. Then if I want to analyze just the category, so I can see, all right, um, I can see health and beauty, that category was the cards, hair care and foot care were sorted in and the frequency and the count in which it was sorted in. If I find things are pretty common and similar, right, like health and beauty um, is similar to health and beauty, I might want to merge those two categories so I can see the analysis together. So I'd click merge and then I'm going to sort and call it health and beauty. Um, and then I merge those categories. Great, so once I've done all my merging, I can actually view the merge matrix here. So I can see all of the cards, all the categories, how frequent things were sorted, when they were sorted, who sorted it, all of that fun stuff there. I can view that um, and analyze it, so quite a lot here. Next, I'm gonna look at the similarities matrix. So I wanna see how similar are cards to each other. So the farther the way they are, the least similar they are, and the closer they are together, the more similar. So bikes and cycling and camping gear were grouped together by 95% of the participants. So they're pretty similar, which makes sense. So you can go um, card by card and check those out. And then lastly, I'll show you is just dendrograms. So similar view to similarity matrix, we're just going to see things and we're going to analyze um, by the different cards and see how similar they are. 
So similar to unmoderated and moderated, you can create your own summary output report. This is great because it lives within your project. So if you wanna make a quick, hey, here's what happened during the session, um, you can do that as well. So that's card sort from a high level perspective. The next method that we're gonna walk through is tree testing. So similar to all the other methods, I'm gonna click the blue button here, create a project, and then I'm gonna select tree test. So click create here. And then I'm going to name my project. So I'm going to call this one Thursday Tree Test. I can describe it. I choose who do I want to get feedback from, whether the Playbook UX panel of participants or my own. And then I'm going to go ahead and click Next. So similar to all the other methods, we can create different audience segments, which is really helpful for finding quotas and setting up your projects, but also analyzing. So if I wanted to analyze how did parents feel about something versus college students, I can do that here. So I'm gonna set up segment one, I'm gonna call this one parents. I'm gonna decide how many participants do I want for this study. I can also use a saved audience. So if I'm testing a lot and I wanna keep using the same demographic, it saves a bunch of time there. And then I can drill into my demographics. So I'm certain age range, job role, industry, things like that. And then I can select my qualifying questions. So for this one, I might want to say something like, are you a parent? Yes, no, qualify, disqualify. So pretty simple there. And then I can also create a new segment if I wanted to do that. So when I'm ready, I'm going to click next here. And here's where I'm going to actually set up the structure of my tree. So we're going to do something with furniture. So we're going to do um, bedroom, right? And then we're going to do another one that is kitchen and then we'll have bath, right? And then within those categories, we're gonna have children. So I might have a child that is beds, right? And then on the same level, I wanna have another child that is um, bedside table. So then under kitchen, we might have something like drink, drinks, drinkware, right? And then we might have something like um, appliances, right? And so I can kind of keep adding those. Bath, I might have something like, um, towels, right? And I just keep adding my children and keep going along. So I can remove that there. And then of course I can preview my tree, make sure all looks good. Now that I've set up my tree, I can set up different tasks. So I might want to say something like find a bed. And so I can define my correct answer. And so since I've already set up my tree, I can select beds here as the correct answer. I can have multiple correct answers. That is possible there. And then I can also add follow-up questions. So I might want to say something, a rating scale question. And I'd say on a scale of 1 through 10, how easy was that to find? And I can kind of keep adding my trees, adding my tasks, adding my follow-up questions, and have a new task if I like. So keep going, build out your tree, build out your questions, and build out your tasks there. And then the next step, similar to how we had with card sort, we can set up our instructions. So we have instructions already for you here. If you wanna customize, you can definitely customize as well. And then when I'm good with the instructions, I'm gonna click next. And then of course I would correct my errors before I would launch, make sure all looks good. And then I would just submit and pay. That goes directly to the testers. They're gonna go ahead and start taking your study and you'll get responses as they come in. So once I have my tree all set up and launched, I can show you what a done tree test looks like. So I have one here and I'm gonna just click into it. And so you can see I have my project details, I have my um, study information here, my audience segments, all that fun stuff. And then I'm gonna drill into my participants. So of course I wanna see um, their demographic information, right? But I wanna see individually how did each participant sort things, right? And so I can see on task one, this participant had a direct success. So the, in this tree, they had it went from home to mortgages to how much um, can you afford, right? And so they can go task by task and see, did they backtrack anywhere? Did they go to a sibling at some point? Um, and you can kind of analyze that. And of course, similar to card sort, you're gonna wanna see everything in aggregate. That's gonna be very important to you. So we'll go ahead and click on analytics and then we can analyze that. So I can see we do have a total success score here. So for this, all of the tasks, we had an 81% success score. And that's gonna tell us how successful participants were to getting to the right answer. And then directness is gonna show how direct were they? Were they going directly to the right answer or did they click around a bunch and then eventually find the right answer? And then you can see broken down by task, right? So for task one, 
Uh, direct success means they went directly to the correct answer. Indirect success means they got to the right answer, but it took them a while. Maybe they clicked around a bit and then they f eventually got there. Direct failure means they went directly to the wrong answer. And then indirect failure, meaning they clicked around a bit and, and found the wrong answer eventually. So for task one, you can see what percentage of people directly succeeded and indirectly succeeded and so on. And then task success. So we want to see how successful were participants in each different task. So I can see task one versus task three, right? And so we can see who was direct failing and all that. I can also see the follow-up questions. So if I selected some follow-up questions, I can see how participants answered those, the average rating, things like that. And then first click. So here I might want to see where were participants clicking first? So what branch do they go? And I can see broken down by task one, task two, task three. Um, so when the branch was mortgages, 78% of participants visited first and 94% visited during the study. So that's another nice analytics there that will help you analyze your study. Same as unmoderated, moderated, card sorting, all the rest, you do have reports so you can analyze and put all that information right into a report right within Playbook UX. So that's a high level overview of tree testing. So the last method that we're gonna go over is surveys. Similar to all the other methods, we're gonna click on the create project button here. And then I'm gonna select surveys here as the option. So create, and I'm gonna label this, I'm gonna call it Thursday survey. And then similar to the other methods, I'm gonna choose whether it's Playbook UX participants or my own participants. So I'm gonna go ahead and click next here. And then I'm going to define my audience. So I can set up multiple segments for my studies. So if I want one segment and I want to compare how do parents feel about my prototype versus college students, I can do that. I can say I'm looking for a certain number of participants. I can also use saved audiences. So if you're doing a lot of testing, you might want to use the same audience over and over again. Definitely there for you. And I can define my demographics, right? Age, um, location, job role, things like that. And I can also set qualifying questions. So I may want to ask something like, are you a parent? Yes, no, right? And I could qualify or disqualify based on their answer. And I can also set up a second audience. So this is how I would kind of compare and contrast my audiences there. So when I'm all set on my audience, I'm going to go ahead and click next here. And then I'm going to start setting up my survey. So surveys are very flexible. Um, it starts with a welcome screen. You can customize those instructions if you'd like. Um, but then you can also set up pages. So I might want to have a first page and say something like um, overview, right? And this is where I'm going to get an idea. And I'm going to add a question here. And you can see for this one, I'm going to add a multi-select question. And I want to ask something like, what is your favorite food? And the answer choices would be pizza, pasta, um, fish, let's just say. And then of course, I can also keep adding questions to this page. So I might want to have more questions, but really what I'm going to show is skip logic. So in order to show skip logic, I'm going to need to set up a second page. So on the second page, I want to route people who um, selected pizza as their favorite food, what page do they go to, right? And so I'm going to say, I'm going to have this pizza page here. And then the pizza page, I'm going to add some questions, right? So um, we have a bunch of different question types that you can choose from. For this, I'm going to use rating. So I might want to say something like, how likely are you to recommend pizza to a friend? <laughs> I could say something like very likely, not so likely. And of course, this is going to be a super simple survey, uh, but I just want to share skip logic. So I'm going to click skip logic here and I'm going to add a skip logic statement. So it's an if then statement, right? So it's if the participant selects what is your favorite food is pizza, is selected, of course I can say is not selected, instead of going, I would skip them to the pizza page. And then I can kind of keep adding skip logic statements here. And that's just gonna be really helpful for you to organize your survey. So I'm saving that there, keep adding my questions. I can edit my end screen if I'd like as well. And of course I can preview my survey, I can randomize questions within that. Um, and then when I'm ready, I'm gonna go ahead and click next. So I'm gonna make sure all looks good with my survey, um, all looks good, and then I would submit, and it's gonna go right out to participants. So similar to all the other methodologies, uh, participants would start taking the study, 
um, and you would get emails as those videos come through. So you can see I have my project details here. I also have my audiences, so I can add participants, save those audiences, all the things I could do with the other methods as well. So I can go participant by participant. I can see all their demographics, all that. I can also filter by the audience segments here, um, check out their demographics, employment, screener, and then I can actually see the um, answer choices. So you can see on page one, this is how they answered on page two, this is how they answered page three, et cetera. Similar to all the other methods, you probably wanna see it all aggregated together. So that's gonna be on your analytics tab here. Analytics is pretty straightforward, right? So I can see on page one, if it was a single select question type, I can see the answer. I can filter by the audience segments. Page two, right, the answer choices. I can search those if they're written responses. So I can kind of keep going along and see all the answer choices for all the different questions that you asked. And of course, similar to all the other methods, I can check out and create reports as well. Uh, so that's high level on surveys. Uh, and thanks so much for watching our demo today.